guess, first of all, you're already working with people that hold property. So they're already in the market, which is great. Clearly they are. But they may, you may not understand as a property manager what equity they have in their property. And it's an old term, but it's called lazy equity. So for an example, if a client has a property and we'll just keep it really simple with a $500,000 value and they only owe $300,000, they've got lazy equity in their property that they could borrow against to buy another property, which creates wealth for the client. But it also, for your property manager, builds their portfolio as well. So it's a two, you know, two-edged prong where your property managers and having access to real estate can actually straight away do a valuation report for their client at no charge and go to their back to their clients and say to them, you know what, your property is now worth X, you, you know, you owe X, potentially you've got $100,000 worth of equity, you know, have you considered buying another property? So what's their wealth journey of the client, but also their wealth journey can help you because it would you would then be able to manage that property from a rental. Welcome back to another episode of the Property Management Podcast. I'm Kylie Walker, aka That Property Mum. Thank you so much for being here. Now, recently I held some investor review meetings with my clients. And one of the biggest topics we covered off on was the topic of interest rates and equity in their investment. And if you're scratching your head thinking, I wouldn't know the first thing about having a conversation like that with a client, good, because this episode is for you. If you are clueless when it comes to mortgages, finance and interest rates, you're not alone. But if you are a property manager and you are dealing with investor clients, there's a whole part of their journey many of us don't really understand myself included. And that is the wealth creation journey. Why have they purchased the property? And I encourage you to start this conversation with your clients and see where it takes you. One of the first areas it will take you is the destination towards potentially more business, especially if they've achieved their goal and they may need to now sell because they've achieved great capital growth or are they in a position to now purchase another investment because of the equity in their current investment. Understanding their goals is the first step. Then understanding the world of property finance and mortgages is next, especially if you wanna be in the position to promote your services as an investor educator. This needs to be a holistic approach, not just understanding the legislation and finding good tenants. But I'm no expert in this area. So to help me break down the world of finance and for investment properties and mortgages, I've asked my own long-term broker, Tracy Keery, from the Mortgage Advice Bureau to help me out. She's an award-winning finance and mortgage broker with 25 years experience, and she has access to over 45 plus banks and lenders. Tracy prides herself on her personalized customer service offering aimed at making the lending experience hassle free. And I can attest to this as a client of Tracy's borrowing uh, can be so stressful for clients. And if you've tried to get a loan in recent years, you will feel the pain that I'm experiencing right now as well, as I'm looking to get some finance for a new property as well. And she believes a caring attitude, support and guidance is paramount to forming long-term relationships with clients. She's an absolute wealth of knowledge and I'm so excited that she's joining me on this episode to not only break down everything you need to know about investment mortgages to help your clients and have conversations with your clients about their financial position, but also what you need to do if you are thinking about getting into the property market or buying your first investment. We cover off on a whole lot of different things. So grab a pen and paper and listen up. Tracy, I have known you a very long time. You have done a lot of mortgages for our family as well and a lot of our clients as well. I call you the miracle mortgage broker. Some of the deals you've got together for for our clients has been amazing. So I'm really excited to have you on the podcast and share your amazing wealth of knowledge and expertise with our audience. But before we dive in, can you please share with our audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started doing what you're doing now? Yes, I can. And thank you for having me, Kylie. And for those kind words, um, I guess after nearly 26 years, yes, I did start when I was 12. I've got a, quite a bit of experience and I'm, from a business perspective, I'm happy to say that I work with a lot of different types of clients. So I think that just gives me, the, sets me up to be able to 
talk to people about their unique situations. But a bit about myself, I actually fell into this industry 26 years ago. It was my beautiful mum who encouraged me to start at Aussie Home Loans as a mortgage broker. I had no idea what I was doing. I was a single mum at the time with a three-year-old child and I, she said, you can do this. So my mum completely backed me. And I just started my journey really like that with a three-year-old and a calculator and uh, I walked into Aussie Home Loans. Back then, I have to say I was the only female broker in the organisation in Queensland and it was such a different field, like different playing field. So much, so many changes have occurred through my career. Uh, one of them is my daughter, who was three, did join my business as a mortgage broker. However, she's had a baby now, so she's home being the mum and I'm looking after her business. So, you know, it's evolved. Um, but I have to say my career has also afforded me an amazing lifestyle. I've, I've travelled. I'm a massive AFL fan. I, I know uh, you're, you're big into NRL. I do like some teams. <laughs> Hopefully the Roosters. <laughs> the Roosters are my number one, of course. Um, I follow Sam. But, you know, AFL, I, I love it. Family life is important to me. And, you know, I've just come back from an amazing trip overseas to visit my youngest daughter, who at 18 decided to go and travel the world. So, you know, I'm feeling very blessed right now. And, and uh, yeah, I've got maybe lots of stuff that some of your property managers might find interesting about business as well. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, very jealous seeing all your holiday um, splashed over social media. So that was amazing. So it's interesting the, the property management space we're in right now. And it's we're not just property managers anymore. We're really moving into that space. So I'm trying to encourage property managers to move into that space of becoming investor educators. And it astounds me sometimes how, and myself included, how little a lot of us know actually about the world of investing in property, how to obtain finance for property and how that all works. So let's maybe start with, you know, what what do we need to know about um, investment mortgages and buying property for, for wealth creation? What should somebody really need to know about that journey? Okay. Well, I guess, first of all, you're already working with people that hold property. So they're already in the market, which is great. Clearly they are. But they may you may not understand as a property manager what equity they have in their property. And it's an old term, but it's called lazy equity. So for an example, if a client has a property, and we'll just keep it really simple, with a $500,000 value, and they only owe $300,000, They've got lazy equity in their property that they could borrow against to buy another property, which creates wealth for the client, but it also, for your property manager, builds their portfolio as well. So it's a two, you know, two-edged prong where your property managers and having access to real estate can actually straight away do a valuation report for their client at no charge and go to their back to their clients and say to them, you know what, your property is now worth X. You, you know, you owe X, potentially you've got $100,000 worth of equity, you know, have you considered buying another property? So what's their wealth journey of the client, but also their wealth journey can help you because it would you would then be able to manage that property from a rental perspective. Yep. And what about refinancing as well? So that's a conversation I've had with a lot of clients. I've just conducted some investor reviews mm -hmm. with a lot of my clients and interest rates, obviously, we all know interest rates, although there was good news yesterday, I think they were put on hold. Yes. Um, but yeah, they, they were all concerned about the interest rate. So I actually, I think I referred one of the ladies that I met with to you to have a look at refinancing. Um, so what is involved in that? Yeah. And when, how would you know if it's good for, for somebody to um, refinance? Okay, so in my business, I have a retention team. So a lot of people assume they have to refinance to obtain a better rate. You can actually go back to your bank yourself and request a rate review. It's no cost. Now, a lot of banks won't tell you this because obviously the more they're making on the interest rate, the more they're making off you. So if you haven't used a broker, you can go back and do it directly. Or if you've got a broker, they can do it on your behalf. So the first thing is what I do with my clients is if their rates are too high, we look at repricing where they are. Because if they're not unhappy with the bank, I don't necessarily need to move them. So if we get a lower rate, at the same time, we do evaluation on their property to get a guide of what it's worth. Because the more equity you have also means the lower rate the bank, in theory, should give you. So example again, if you're under an 80% lend, so if your property is worth $500,000 
and you owe 400 or up to 400, you're at 80% value. That will automatically give you a lower rate than over 80%. So depending on when the investor got into the market, they might have started at 90%, but they're now down to 80 or 70. So all while they're growing equity, they can obtain a lower rate. So first option, we go back to their bank. If their bank doesn't budge, then we can look at other options for them. Now, rates in the investment space are higher than owner-occupied. Some investors also have interest only. That's a higher rate again. So even though you're not paying as much per month because you're only paying the interest, the rate can be a lot higher, up to 1% than a P&I rate. So a principal and interest rate may be something even to look at to save money as well. So, so let's talk about that. Actually, let's let's break down so principal and interest repayments. So yeah, maybe just explain a little bit about what they are. So principal and interest is when you are actually paying off the loan balance as well, the loan limit, sorry, as well as the interest. So once again, the $500,000 property would say a $400,000 loan. If your loan's principal and interest or the acronym in in the world of lending is P&I, repayments, you're paying interest and some principal. So you're reducing that debt. Correct. You're reducing the debt. You're reducing the principal. So every time you make a payment, you're paying more off the principal and less interest. So obviously, the more you make a payment into that mortgage, the quicker you'll pay it down. With an interest-only loan, if you borrow $400,000 on interest only, you are only paying back the interest. So you will still owe $400,000 in one, two, three or four years' time. Now, many years ago, that was a strategy for a lot of investors to have interest only due to negative gearing. Mm -hmm. So negative gearing is not something I can give advice on, but essentially it means you might be able to get some tax breaks if you're in the high income brackets. So interest only, because what happens with an interest only loan is you still owe the same amount and your interest is the same every month. You haven't made any savings. Gotcha. So that's, that's why potentially a lot of people did it. And also interest only, if you've got an, your own home and you want to pay that debt down first, you would make more payments off that and keep an interest only mortgage, once again, due to cash flow, because any extra money you might be getting in rent on your investment property can help pay back your owner-occupied debt. So it's all around the client's wealth strategy. However, you know, as over 26 years of lending, a lot more of my investors are taking a principal and interest loan because they want to own the property. It's a part of their wealth creation strategy for retirement. Not necessarily selling it in like 10 or 20 years' time. Correct, yes. And and having the capital growth. Sorry. Cut you no, off. No, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So so yeah, so they so that so the strategy is long term keeping properties forever as opposed to selling it off um in in five five, ten, fifteen years when they've got some capital growth on it. Yes, so they hold them for a long longer periods and they want to own more of the property. So obviously when they retire, they've got their nest egg. What we're also finding, Kylie, too, is a lot of clients are rent vesters. So we've even got a lot of first home buyers that are buying an investment property, not even realising they're an investor because they're, well, I'm not an investor, I'm a first home buyer, but they can't afford to live, you know, they they can't afford to buy where they want to live. So they're renting and then they're buying somewhere else. So there's a whole market that we're seeing that maybe are being a bit untapped with property managers because you're assuming, are they renters? But because they might live here but want to get into the market, you know, that they are still investors. That's fantastic advice there because, you know, it, it comes back to that, you know, be careful how you treat people, treat everybody equally because, yeah, you don't know those tenants that you're putting in in your nicer suburbs might own investments in other suburbs and if you're not treating them nicely, they're not going to be passing that on to you. Correct. And and we're also finding just on that topic, yep. first home buyers are leaving home at 27 so they're a lot older now, you know, dare I say it. But two years ago, you know, when I was growing up, most we left really young. We had to, couldn't wait to leave. Whereas now for the first time of, of home, first time buyers actually leaving home is at 27. And they're not necessarily buying their own home. So there's a big untapped market there. And then you've also got um, 50 over 50s that are first time buyers. So I know you work with investors, but once again, you could have long term tenants that have never bought a property before. And they're over 50 looking to buy their first property, but they're also quite embarrassed because they feel they should know more about what they're doing. 
So back to education is really key. So even with a first-time buyer that's renting, they may never think they can buy a home to live in, but they could definitely buy an investment property. So understanding your market and who your clients are and who your property manager's clients are will actually help create that better relationship with your client. Absolutely. That's really, uh, I never thought of it like that at all. And I know my kids, they're all staying at home a lot longer. They're all buying investment properties and I'm not. So, because I'm not supporting them. That's it. But you can see how times have changed, right? It, it, you know, and to have the dream of a home, it's still, I believe, the Aussie dream. But I think we've changed how people are, are obtaining that. Absolutely. So how hard is it then to obtain finance in the current market that we're in at the moment? What's happening in the industry? Can you give us some little insights, what your predictions are? I know it'd be lovely <laughs> to have that um, crystal ball to see what interest rates are doing. With your insider knowledge, what is sort of happening moving forward? Sure. Okay. Well, look, in banks are still open to lend. They're still open. The changes that we're seeing or have been coming is it's down to clients' living expenses. So when a bank assesses you as a client, they look at your expenses, so your income and outgoings. Now, with living expenses, most people think they don't spend much money at all, but they spend more. Yeah, we all do. I have a, I have a budget. Anyway, moving on. But, you know, we all probably spend a bit more than we think. And once you see it all on in paper and you actually have a look at it, then you can sort of say, well, okay, I need to put my head in here or there. So for an example... If I've got a client coming to me, I need to look at their income and expenses and also their living expenses. Some clients don't realise that their health debt is actually now an expense under lenders' living expenses. Health insurance, life insurance, they're all on top of general living expenses. Now, if you also are with your living expenses, if you're living beyond your means, banks need to see three months of accounts so if someone was coming to me and they were, let's just say, they had Netflix, they had all the streaming devices, they had gym that they never used, we'd look at those expenses and, and give them some guides on how to reduce those living expenses. Because when you do buy a house, and you would know this yourself, you do give up stuff because you've got the house, you've got a mortgage rates, you have different commitments. So we can coach people on being buying ready or if they're already ready, you know, as an investor, you can borrow up to 90% of the value of the property. So that would mean you'd need a 10% deposit plus costs. So from a lending perspective, when you're buying as an investor, you've got your income that you earn from your job, but you've also got rental income. So that's where it can actually help the client get into the market. The difference in lending even three years ago before rates started to go up, we were assessing someone's home loan to buy at 5 and 6%. So anywhere, sorry, between 4 and 6% because the rates were 3 and the bank have a 3% buffer. So now we're at 6s and 7s, we're assessing at 8s and 9s and 10%. So it does put some people out of the market, you know, unfortunately, but that's where it is because we're assessing high. And the reason the banks put the buffer in is because if rates go up, you need to make sure you can still afford it. So the other thing that I think that a lot of people don't understand is their credit file. So what your credit file is, is if you've applied for finance for a personal loan, a car loan, you know, the buy now, pay later schemes that are very popular, they impact your credit score massively. Really? So, so like yes. after pay? Yes. After pay, Klarna, buy now, pay later, all of them, your credit score can be here and go down because it's a credit hit every time. So if so, you default on that payment... If you default, but also every time you you inquire to use use the buy now pay later, it does a hit on your credit file. So it's making late payments is another issue, but just applying for credit. So the more you apply for consumer credit, the lower your credit score is. Okay, wow. And the higher the credit score, different lenders all they use is your credit score. So if your score is low, and being a broker, we know where to place an application based on a client's credit score. So something else that might be worthwhile with your property managers, and you can do them online for free. There are organisations that you can go on and like get your own credit report and check it. Because if you've had a lot of hits, and when I say hits, inquiries, that can impact on your score. If you've made late repayments, that can that's a massive issue, big issue. And the best thing before you want to apply for a home loan is to get all that cleaned up, if that's your situation. 
Absolutely. Oh, that's really interesting. I will be cancelling my afterpay um, <laughs> ASAP, actually. So the, all these little things that you don't realise. And I just had a thought then, this is how my brain works now. Are we able to do credit checks on like other people? Okay, we can. I can as a, being a broker. So with all my clients, when our process is once we just determine that they want to go ahead with something, they sign a disclosure and we do a credit report for them up front. And it's a soft touch credit report, so I'll explain what that means. I'm not applying for finance for them. So it's not a hit or a credit inquiry like it is when you apply for credit with a bank or a lender or a credit card. So we're not affecting their credit file, but what it gives us is we can look at it and go, right, we know exactly where the client can go. And sometimes, Kylie, some people don't realise they've got a, a blemish on their credit file. For example, 10 years ago, someone could have had a credit card that they missed a payment on or it went into default. They don't know. So, you know, we always check. Now, I don't know if you can do it as a property manager. That's something you'd need to find out because you're not giving credit advice. So I don't know. But all my clients I do, and if I have a, ever have a somebody, you know, if your team said to me, look, we'd like to work with you on this, we could certainly organise them. But you can, there are some companies that uh, are available free. Okay. Online, yeah. I just, that was just a, a random thought that I had then um, when you've got, you know, certain people applying for properties or, you know, just another another check, security check, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So, and that could fall under that, but I guess you'd have to check with the guidelines of the REIQ because you are right. The intent, in some ways, they're not applying for credit, but they are, you are going on their character and character is what your credit is like, <laughs> really. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So what's happening with interest rates right now? What should an investor be paying in the marketplace right now? What's too high and where should they be looking, I guess, if it comes down to that, if we're giving advice on getting them to look at refinancing? If you are anything like me, you think you know your rent roll numbers. Well, I thought I did until I had a rent roll health check and I was quite literally shocked. The money I was leaving on the table was astounding. And this is not something that I'm proud to admit. There were missed management fees, let fees, advertising and lease renewal fees not being charged and properties even without bonds. And all of this was happening despite monthly audits being conducted in my business. So how did I uncover all these gaps in my valuable income? Well, I had a rent roll due diligence from my good friend Tazi, aka the Rent Roll Queen and founder of the Tazi Way, a specialist in rent roll due diligence, business valuation and management rights. The Tazi Way is the innovative force driving the real estate industry. With 25 years of business and real estate acumen, they find gaps and risks in your agency to find undiscovered value. If you'd like to book your business in for a rent roll due diligence, Head to the link in the show notes and mention That Property Mum for a 10% discount. If you're ready to be a super organised, focused and productive property manager, buckle up because Colmeo is about to revolutionise the way that you work. Colmeo is the driving force behind property management excellence in residential real estate. Now picture this a comprehensive end-to-end -end system designed to be the beating heart of your property management tasks, manage your properties, owners and tenants, and handle payments, inspections, and even marketing listings without leaving the platform. Comio is designed to be an all-in-one solution to all your property management needs. And here's the game changer. Comio isn't just software. It's been awarded the most innovative prop tech scale up in 2023. Yes, you heard it right. Colmeo has been recognized for their groundbreaking approach to property management software. How good is that? So property managers, whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, dive into the future of property management with Colmeo. You can book in a demo with the team today and go in their weekly draw for a Prezi gift card worth $100. All you need to do is to head to the link colmeo.com forward slash that property mum and colmeo is k-o-l-m-e-o -E okay so recently so 
So the other thing with banks is they will let normally, if you go to the bank direct, they'll just say that's the rate. With brokers, and I'm not tr- I'm not trying to sell my business and what I do here because I always will give advice to anybody. But we, we can go to them and say we want a better rate than that. So when someone comes to me and their lending might be a million dollars or it might be $500,000, we always go to the bank and ask for a better re- better rate. The majors are known for that. So the major banks, they'll set quote one rate, but we always go and ask for a better one. So the, sm- the second banks, like the non, your INGs, your Macquarie's, banks like them, they always give you their best rate from the get-go. So there's, you know, a little bit of movement there. Recently, for an example, I've been working with investors on interest-only loans, now below 80% LVR, so the client has 20% equity. We're getting 6.75 on an interest-only loan. For principal and interest, I'm getting anywhere between 6.4 to 6.6, and that also comes back to the LVR. So once again, as I said earlier, the lower that LVR, so the more equity you've got in the property, the better the rate. But I can't stress how important it is for any client, whether they've used a broker or not, to go to their bank. If they've used a broker, go to your broker. Your broker should be doing that as a part of their service. But if you've gone direct, you should go back and ask for a better rate. And the best thing that your property managers could do in that instance is give them the property report to say, well, your property is now worth $800,000 and your loan's only three hundred. dollars So that equity gives you a much better rate. I love that. That is so powerful to be so proactive as well with your clients. That's just yeah. adding an extra layer of service. And you know, not only does that help us out as well in terms of if they purchase another property uh, sure. and we can provide that property that they're going to purchase as well through our sales teams. But it, yeah, also we're, we're getting more management in there as well. But, and that, look, and that's the thing, service, and in my industry, there's 17,000 brokers, like real estate, you know, there, there's a lot, but we all have different skill sets and we're all offer different service. My, I started my retention about three years ago where I, I have somebody in my team that reprices all my clients. So what I mean by that is on 12-month anniversary, we go to their bank and ask for a better rate. So I have a system that's in automatically in place. If they don't, if the bank comes back and says we're not doing anything better, then we do offer our client would they like to look at other lender options if it's worth it. So for me personally, I'm just not going to refinance someone for a 0.005 reduction. But if I'm getting them a percent, anything over a quarter of a percent, I'll, I will talk to them about considering it and comparing what it looks like. So there are options out there, but a bank won't do it. You've got to approach them. So with the team that I, I use, the team for my retention, I... When the client, when we notify the client that they've got a reduction, I get a text message all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because, you know, if if it saves them $50 a month or $200 a month, it's a saving in their pocket for doing, they don't have to do anything. Absolutely. That's great. Service, yeah. It's a really simple service. And then the clients are more, you know, they're more sticky. They want to work with me because I try and give them a whole rounded service. I don't just go, oh, well, I've got the home loan. See you later. I want to make sure I look after them for the term of their loan, whatever that may be. Absolutely. I think that's great. And, and I can attest to the, the value of the customer service that you do deliver in as part of your business. Now, you. off that investor topic, well, kind of not off, off it, but if there's a young property manager listening who wants to either buy a property or get her first investment or, or his, shouldn't just say his or her, his or him or her want to buy their first property, what are the key things that they should have in place? And like, is pre-approval still a thing? Like, is that yeah. worth it? Yes. Look, we do a lot of pre-approvals because we're also in a hot market, as you would know, and all the you know people listening in being in property. Hot market, pre-approval is definitely worth it. They are valid for 90 days. Now, recently I've had clients that their prop, it's expired because they couldn't find anything, but then we've, we've had to do it again, the application, and they find properties. But it is if you've got a pre-approval, and what a pre-approval is, is you, the client, are approved with the bank. So we do our credit check, we get your supporting documentation, we send you out lender options, and you advise that you want to go with lender B. So you are approved. The only condition on that is the valuation on the property and that the property meets, you know, the requirements. So, you know, it's got to have, and once again, it's got to have a working bathroom and kitchen or it's inhabitable. So, you know, if you're buying something you want to renovate, and I don't mean to go off topic, but just make, we've just got to make sure that property is acceptable to the lender. 
So any borrowing of any type, you need a deposit. And some lenders don't require it to be genuinely saved. So it means it could just be in the bank for one day from a family member or you could have had a win. But some lenders do require you have a minimum of 5% savings. So if you're buying a property for 500, you need to have at least 25,000 in genuine savings plus costs. When you buy a property as an investor, there are more stamp duty applies. It's higher than if you're a first home buyer. That's just, and that's state by state. Every state also has a different stamp duty requirement and it's a different stamp duty fee, whether you're an investor or an owner occupier. So depending on where your clients are and where they're based, even if you as property managers, you can actually go online and find out what the fee would be to buy a property, say in Melbourne or Brisbane, as a comparative. So, you know, you might want to give that as a service as well. Well, if you're buying in Brisbane for an investment at this price, this is the stamp duty. In Melbourne, it's this. So, you know, they're just different ways of offering that service, once again, to your client. But any of your team that is looking, definitely income and deposit and good credit, realistically. And, you know, there's a lot of people now that are buying with friends. So there's there's some different types of loan facilities so that you could buy with friends or a family member so that you're not tied with them on the loan, but it could get you into the property market. Amazing. I know. And I think that's the beauty of the world we live in now. There are so many more options. And I, I know a lot of people think that they're never going to be able to get into the property. I, I hear this all the time. I'll never yeah. be able to afford a property. I mean, people can't even afford rental properties. But the reality is you probably, what you're paying for rent now, you can, if you get smart, speak to somebody like yourself. There is ways around it now and you probably save yourself money by actually buying a property than actually renting these days. Renting. Yeah, and rent, look, I mean, the rental market, You, I'm not telling you, but it's hot. Like it, it, property is just hot. During COVID, I don't know what happened. I thought we might have been in a bit of trouble, to be honest, in our industry. Maybe you did too because... Yep property and finance but it's just gone it's exploded so everyone's got FOMO <laughs> um, and you know my personal opinion is property for me is something that wherever I buy property I always try and buy something that I can make some money on whether it's a renovation or you know capital growth but I always buy something and if in my head from a risk perspective I take risks for me personally and I think well what's the worst thing that can happen someone always needs to live somewhere so if I have to get out of the market, it's for sale or I could go and live in it, do you know, like, and people always have to live somewhere. So property to me is such a good vehicle to create wealth. And once you get set up with your first one, it's so interesting how so many of my clients have gone and bought two and three and four and they still don't think they're investors. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. Oh, you'll have to make sure you let me know any of the ones that live around my area that have got investors. <laughs> Okay, I I will. <laughs> thank you, thank you. No, that is amazing. Thank you. So, just to quickly wrap up what we've because we've sort of covered a whole gamut of the the mortgage broking industry in this conversation. But if you want to become a property investor educator, key things to know: the equity. Yes. And I'll, oh my God, I've just had I've just had one of my menopause mental blanks. The equity and the refinancing refinance piece. rates. So yep. you know, even to, even just to offer your clients the service of a better rate, but equity in the property to determine if they can buy another property or they may want to upgrade that property. I mean, there's lots of options. Um, and a credit if you can look at doing credit checks, that's something that would give you a point of difference as well. So I'm I'm not sure. And I think even talk to your tenants, you might be surprised. They might think that they could never get into the market. But like we said, if they like living where they are, they might buy somewhere else because that is a trend that we're seeing as well. Amazing. Thank you so much. Now, I love personal development. Can you share a tool, resource, podcast or something that you think will help our listeners? Well, and it's probably very old school for, for you. I do listen to podcasts, but... For me, I surround myself with mentors and people that are doing either they're much better than me, or they're at my level, and, and because I want to work with people or I want a mentor that knows what it's like and is successful. So I surround myself with mentors in the industry and externally. And in my business, what I've learned is I'm really good at the front end piece. I'm really good without I'm not sounding arrogant here, but I know finance. I know how to put a deal together. I know the solution. The process back end, crap at it not my thing so i've got people working in my business that know everything else that i don't know 
So, you know, in terms of business, and you would probably attest to that as well, we can't be everything to everybody. So I've really worked out what my skill set is and I have got people in my business. That you, that support you. They do their, yes. they stick in their lane and you yes, stick in your lane. correct. And yes. it works because we both, we're both good at the difference so we complement each other. So I think if you're young or you're starting out you're not sure, the other thing is, you know what, just back yourself because we all started somewhere. When I started, I was this nervous person, had no idea about finance, and 26 years later, you know, I'm still here because I backed myself and I had really good support people around me, family, friends and business partners. Love it. Such great and valuable advice as well. Thank um, you. And you've created a, the life that, that you wanted, wanted to live as well. Like, you know, people sometimes just go about their day-to-day -day stuff and they don't actually think that that is achievable for them. But, you know, it is if you, I, and I know, and you, you and I both know, it's a lot of hard work. It doesn't just happen easily. Yes. Um, and, you know, but, but back, it starts with backing yourself and then you do the hard work. Then you find a way, you, you take the steps that you need to do to get there. And eventually you create that lifestyle freedom or that, you know, be able to go on holidays overseas, whatever, or whatever your thing is. That's right. And it's right. And I mean, you know, people have said how lucky I am and I, I I was lucky when I got into the industry, like I worked with some really good people, but I made my own luck as well and you do have to work hard. It's, you know, I get a, I work every day in my business and I really enjoy it. There are moments where I have my meltdowns, but I think that's just human nature and the industry we're in, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on a client, there's finance involved, there's feelings and emotion. Um but essentially, I just enjoy what I do. And when I, even yesterday, when my client settled their home loan, even after 26 years, I'm like, hey, you know, it's just the best feeling Absolutely. to be able to assist somebody create what they want in their life, I guess. Absolutely. And I think for property managers as well, like we we often cop the the worst yeah. end of that finance spe spectrum because our clients are under pressure. Their mortgage rates, interest rates have gone through yeah. the roof. They've probably got a principal place their cost of living's gone up, they're really feeling the pinch. And if you can understand that holistic investor journey, you can have a bit more empathy and realise that it's they, they might be cranky at us because we've got maintenance fixed without their approval, but it's really the issue is that they're under a lot of financial stress. Yes. So, yeah. And everyone deals with it differently. So, you know, um, I guess you've just got to, the more you know the client, you know, for me, and, you know, I have clients that I work with a lot. Some of them are, you know, lot low touch, which is in every business. But the ones I work with all the time, uh, you know, I know exactly what, what their pressure points are and their pain points are. So, and, you know, an investor client is also a very kind of different mindset to an owner-occupied client because with, with someone buying their own home, there's so much more emotion in it. You know, it's my home, it's the dream. An investor, it's really more also about, wealth creation, what's it going to cost me per week, what does it look like at the end of the month. So, you know, even those types of things which modelling around, buying this property with this rent, this is, you know, your, your benefit or your pro or con. So, you know, those little, t you know, bits of information just help your client to think more clearly about what it is they want potentially. Absolutely. How can our audience connect further with you? How can they reach you? Well, I am on the website. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook. So Tracy Keary is my name. I, I work under Mortgage Advice Bureau in Brisbane. So at the end of this, I can give you my phone number and email address and, you know, everything. I, and I do answer to text messages for all the millennials out there. I know that they are not great at talking on the phone. <laughs> they prefer to communicate through um, text. So even though I'm older... I do understand also the different ways of communication with the different generations. So that might be another tip for us all as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll share all of your details in the show thank notes you. so anyone can reach out to you further. Thank you. And, you know, thank you so much. I mean, I think we've had a relationship for about the last 15 years. Um, it has been a long time. Thank and I, I, I would just share one story. I remember we had some clients and I think they were both on Centrelink and this was when obviously the prices in it in our area were very low but yeah you this deal looked so un impossible I remember that one yeah and you got this deal done I think they were both on this I mean beautiful people both on disability support pensions um and yeah this, this they they ended up owning their own property it was a really beautiful story 
And that's the thing that makes me, you know, do this. I mean, yes, I get paid. I have to have a, you know, I earn a living, which we have to. But those are the stories I love. When I, when somebody just thinks they can't get into the market and, you know, I've dealt with a lot of single mums that never thought they'd buy a property ever, you know, like because of circumstance or people that have been through hardship and, you know, it's just, and whether the loan amount is $50,000 or a million dollars, I just want to look after everybody to give them what they need because, you know, it, it, it's such a good feeling when I can help someone. That's my that's my reason for doing this. I mean, it's kept me up a lot at night sometimes and there's been tears and tantrums. But, you know, I wouldn't change it for all the people that are in a home that's theirs. We all, you know, they all own something. And I recently had just, side note, but a, a gentleman up in um, Emerald and he's had, you know, had some really difficult family life going on. And he, need, he wanted to get back into the market. And I said, he said, mum owned property so we could leverage off mum's property. And when I rang mum, I, I had to speak to her and go through the process because she's guaranteeing it. She said, Tracy, please just get him into a home. He just needs his own home again. Well, I'm nearly crying. She's nearly crying. So when I did, she was, the, the, the feeling of it was like, I did it. He's now got his own home. He's not homeless. You know, he's a really hardworking man that just needed someone to listen and ask the right questions of how we could make this happen. Beautiful. Oh, so, love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Tracy. I really appreciate that. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And if anyone needs anything or wants to talk, please reach out. I'm more than happy to help with any of the tips that we did cover today. Amazing. Thank you. One thing I dread doing is chasing up rent arrears and debt collection. It takes up valuable time and it can often lead to conflict. But it is a necessary evil when you are running a property management business. But there is an easier way to make sure your tenant's rent is paid on time and in advance, and it's called RentPay. RentPay is a secure and simple to use payment platform that saves agents time and money with fast, accurate receding while making life better for renters. To top it all off, you'll never have to worry about dishonor fees or unknown deposits again. How good is that? Cleared funds are deposited straight into your bank account in a single daily payment with accurate receipting and reference numbers auto-assigned, and it's fully compatible with all trust accounting systems. It's a super flexible payment option for tenants who can pay rent in multiple ways, including direct debit, credit card, or instantly pay with payer ID. Fees are minimal, and rent pay even helps with the rent arrears process by automating reminders to renters when payments are due or missed. If you are currently paying large bank fees, struggling with constant dishonors because the funds aren't cleared when their funds land in your trust or wasting time chasing up unknown payments, I encourage you to book in a free demo with RentPay and give yourself and your renters an easier way to pay rent. Can I ask you a quick favor before you leave this episode? Now we all know how important reviews are for businesses these days and mine is no different. If you could spare just a minute to follow, rate and review this podcast, it would mean a lot to me. In fact, what would get me super excited is if you share this podcast with someone in the industry who you think might need to hear some of the episodes right now. And if you'd like to find out more about working with me or any of the products I have to help you start, grow or scale your property management business, head to my website, thatpropertymum.com.au or check out the links in the show notes.